Hello, welcome to Speech Talk Live episode. Hey, Julie, can you mute your line? Oh, I'm sorry. Because every time you make a noise, it could switch back. So I'm going to have to do this again now. Okay, so let me start again. Welcome to Speech Talk Live episode number 35. My name is Jay Yoza, and I have with me today Julie Wu Finkelstein. And I'm the host of this show. And as you can see, this is our 35, 35th show. So we've been doing this uh, for some time. And what we try to do on this show is simple, as the show indicates, speech talk live. We talk about uh, topics related to public speaking, whether it's one-on-one -on -one in a small group, like in a meeting, uh, or in a, in a large group, uh, you know, at a conference or, or something like that. So this is a, a, a loosely affiliated with uh, Coursera and their course uh, introduction to public speaking both julie and i are our mentors for that course so we help uh, students out who have any questions and also we create this show as a way to discuss uh, speech topics review speeches share our speeches and also an opportunity for people who come on to to practice their speaking so we're not just telling them what to do we're actually doing it so we're doing it by example that's the whole purpose of this because uh, as I like to say people that, that if you want to become a good to great speaker, you have to be constantly learning, that's given, but then you also have to be teaching people so that you know how much you really have learned and that you can uh, share your knowledge with other people. Uh, you have to coach people because sometimes uh, there are people out there who may be working on speeches and uh, you may be asked to help uh, coach them to, so that they can you know, give a good speech. Then also, you have to constantly practice. That's given. You have to constantly keep uh, producing. So you have to const you can't just wait for that speech that comes out of blue moon somewhere. You got to be, you know, putting out work. Got to create body of work. Uh, and we'll talk about that in one of the session today. And that's very important that you you do that. That we try to encourage people to do that because I do that and Julie does that. So. If you're watching this, we really highly encourage you to do that. And one of the session, segments we're going to talk about, that if you're starting out how to get started, if you don't have time to go through the, uh, the Coursera course, Introduction to Public Speaking. So, and, and the, the, the last thing I think we do in this uh, course and also uh, the learning uh, cohort that we have on Google Plus is that this is a support group. So this is your opportunity to practice, to learn without being ridiculed or being rejected. Because let's face it, speaking is scary, it's risky, and a lot of times uh, just giving that speech in front of people who are there to work with you or support you can make a huge difference. And I've seen that. Uh, all I know is that everybody who's come on the show who had to give a speech have done a fantastic job. Because just seeing yourself give a speech and talking about it is for most people that's what they need and that's the kind of service that we provide uh, doing this show. <clears throat> so let me just briefly tell you about uh, today's uh, show. Uh, we, after I do my intro, Julie will do her quick intro, then we'll do our three minute segment, which is sort of our way of uh, practicing because let's face it, we also need to keep <laughs> getting better. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll just uh, stay the same, and that's not the purpose. You know, we always want to try to get better. Uh, and then once we done, once we're done with our three-minute segment, uh, we'll move into the three segments that we usually do. The first segment today, I'm going to be talking about a technique that uh, I think I that I use, and I thought I had shared it, but I think I formalized it, and I'm going to discuss that and uh, get Julie's uh, input in what she thinks because I've been working with a student out of Brazil named Fabiana. And uh, we've been exchanging emails, and I've been kind of helping her uh, kind of, and she's kind of new, and she wants to really improve. So I've been trying to help her to kind of simplify it for her. And now that I've done it, it I started thinking about it. So I just wanted to uh, disc have a discussion around that topic, that effective technique. And the second segment, uh, Julie's going to facilitate that. And she has recorded a speech uh, related to a book she's writing on uh, the benefits of uh, stretching. And she will introduce the, the subject. There's a video that uh, that I have already seen, and I'll include it so you can also take a look at it. But this one, she'll just kind of summarize the video 
and then I'll let her, if she has any question related to the video, I'll focus primarily on the, the content part, unless she has some specific question about the video, because I don't know how much time she had to, to work on this. So I'll let her run uh, drive that segment, facilitate that segment. And in the third segment, I want to talk about something that we don't really think about when it comes to speaking. We get so involved in messaging, voice, and body language, and all of these other things. But there is one key thing that I think we need to discuss. You got to have fun when you're talking, when you're giving a speech. And I think it's very important. We don't think about that. You got to really enjoy this. Speaking is hard. And I think it's important to enjoy it, the entire end-to-end -end process right from the beginning. I call it the pre-game. You got to enjoy the grind. I mean, speaking is a lot of work. You got to enjoy the grind, then actually being on the stage and enjoying being on the stage. And then afterwards, what I call post game to do the evaluation. And you've got to enjoy the process end to end. Otherwise, it's really hard to become a good speaker. And you can't just say, well, I'm, I'm glad to be here. It's not enough. You've got to really show it with your presence. And I want to have a discussion around that, because that's something we don't really talk about. So that's the show for today. I hope uh, if you're watching live, uh, thank you for joining. If not, uh, if you're watching it on a recording, let us know if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions so that we can uh, keep improving this uh, show. OK, Julie, do you want to do your quick intro? And then we'll get to our three-minute segment. Good morning, Jay. Thanks so much. It's a great day today in terms of the topic. And I have uh, been with you on your different techniques. This looks like a Lean Speech Technology 2 by Jay. I'm looking forward to talk about that. I'm talking about the stretching as a practice, as a path. And today, um, I like to say that one of the things I've been really enjoying doing is uh, being a one-on-one -on -one coach and a coach for small groups. And most of the people has an idea or even just an itch of something they want to do, and they want to somehow make it happen. So I. I am their coach, I'm the facilitator, I'm the one who runs along their side. And for example, one man is uh, <clears throat> in London, and I'm, I'm there to support him because his goal is to release a platinum album by the end of the year. Another friend of mine has been working on relaunching her practice in a body work, uh, healing practices in Shiatsu. So I was able to help her to present her work for the first time in three years in a small group that we run. So I like to do these things, and I look forward to people coming to my uh, groups as well as my individual relationships. Thank you, Jay. OK, Julie, thanks a lot. We'll take a brief pause, and then we'll move into our three-minute uh, segment. OK, welcome back. My name is Jay Oza, and I have Julie Wu Finkelstein joining us today, as not a, today, every day, all the time. <laughs> and uh, we're moving into our three minute segment. And the purpose of this is sort of like, uh, you know, it's like a freestyle, free topic, right? Uh, the, we move into our segments uh, parts later on. But in this one, we get to decide any topic that we want to talk about. So, as is customary, I always go first. So I want to talk about something uh, that I've been giving some uh, thought to recently. And it has to do with uh, that, you know, I don't think this only applies to public speaking. I think it applies to a lot of things, that why people always struggle when they're trying to learn something new and then they eventually give up. And it's one of those things that is out there that's kind of obvious, but we don't really focus on it. And it has to be unlearning. And, and I think public speaking is one of those things where people cannot learn public speaking. Because you know it's one of those skills that we think we're good at. Most of people, if you ask them, are you a good speaker? Well, if you ask them to give a public speech, they'll say no. But if you tell them, are you a good speaker? I say, oh, yeah, yeah, I can be. I, I really am good at small talk and all that, but not when it comes to public speaking. And I think you've got to first, before you learn a skill, especially something that you've already been doing, that you think you're doing, you have to first ask yourself whether you're doing it well. And if you're not, you're going to have to unlearn that. And that, I think, 
is the most difficult part when it comes to public speaking. People do not unlearn their bad habits when it comes to public speaking. So <clears throat> one thing that Juliet mentioned is that uh, that uh, that I have the, the, this method that I use, or at least what I call, but I've taken ideas from different places and I call it the lean speech method. Lean speech method is primarily to craft a speech. Uh, the technique that I'm going to be discussing later in one of the segments is more of a delivery technique. It, it's both delivery, but the crafting part is not part of it. So it's kind of connected, but it's not. But even before you get to these techniques, you first have to ask yourself, okay, if I if you had to give a speech, how would you do it? So let's say if I was coaching Julie and Julie said, Jay, I want to learn public speaking. Rather than telling her the technique and all that, I'm not sure, I'm, th I'm thinking about this. I'm kind of brainstorming while I'm talking here. Rather than just telling her, hey, Julie, try this technique, try that technique, I'm not sure that would help her that much. I think the first thing I should have her do is saying, Julie, here, why don't you use the method that you're currently using and develop the speech? And then I have to see what method she really used because if that method, she has to first unlearn because if she doesn't unlearn that method, the new method isn't going to really help her because when, if, if under pressure, if she has to give a speech, she'll resort to the old method because that's already ingrained in her in her brain. So I I don't know how to do this. I'm still kind of learning. How do you make somebody unlearn what they're cur what they've already learned? And speaking when let's say if somebody is an adult, you, you know when it comes to orthodontics, right? They say that you have to do it where, when you're young because it's malleable, right? Your your jaws and bones are malleable, so you can move your teeth around. It's much easier. As you get older, it's it's really hard. <laughs> it takes much longer. And I did it, and it didn't even work. So. Speaking is like that, that if you get somebody later it, it, later on uh, when they're adult, it's very hard to unlearn that because they've been learning speaking for such a long time. So this is something I've been giving some thought to, that the main part of public speaking that we don't really focus on is to unlearn the existing habits that you already developed before you can learn some new habits that'll help you become a better speaker. So that's something I'm going to focus more on, and it's uh, something I just wanted to discuss uh, as part of my three-minute speech, and hopefully this needs to be expanded further. Julie? Thanks, Jay. Yes, unlearning new habits is a, it's a great question because we are adults. We have certain habitual patterns. Actually, one of the stretches, the stretches I'm doing, is it unlearns the habits because it creates new uh, nervous system pathways. But I'll talk about more um, when we get to that segment. Today, I want to take a minute and talk about um, a tool that I use. I've been using it for 20 years, and actually, I just asked a new person that started with me to work on it. And as you know, I have this concept of a creation life cycle. And when we go through a creation life cycle, as you say, we usually start off with an idea. Um, the next part is uh, sometimes we call it proof of concept. I like to say it's a testing for validity and checking for opportunity. So stage one is coming up with the idea. Stage two is uh, opportunity test. Um, because even if the idea is great, you don't, there are no opportunities for what you want to do. It doesn't work. And the third one is pilot. Pilot is creating a real life model and to roll it out. So it's an unscaled project rollout. You know, a lot of the times when they talk about agile development or rapid development, uh, that's what they're talking about, doing a quick pilot. Um, then the third one is uh, roll our implementation, and that's what the business plan is. And then finally, maintenance, which is keeping things going. And as a human being, we are invited to do a vision at the beginning of the year, and things don't come up. As you probably heard from me before, people who write things down have a much greater chance of success. In Stephen Covey's book, um, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he mentioned that there was a study done in Harvard of uh, one year of Harvard graduates, 
and there were uh, people who were invited to have a vision, three group of students. One, stu one group was not told to do anything, one group was um, invited to have a vision, and the third group was to have a vision written down. And the ones that, the, the ones who have visions uh, has twice the income after like five years or ten years, double the income of those with no vision. But the people who wrote down their vision did, did ten times as well as both groups combined. So my, my tool today is create a binder and in your binder have at least five tabs. And the five tabs are basically your ideas, things you're testing for opportunity, your pilots when you're ready to roll out something, and then you roll up your actual project, and then maintenance. Maintenance is, um, again, to use Stephen Covey's um, book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, is things you do every day to, uh, to sharpen your soul. So it's self-care, like health practices, time management, and set your priorities. So that's in your maintenance file. It's been pretty much proven that people may have an idea, but to take the idea to the business plan itself, we lose a lot of people because it's too big of a jump. So I invite people to have ideas, put it in one section, and then take their favorite ideas and work on testing it out, you know, talking to your friends, uh, go into a chamber of commerce networking meeting, see if there's business opportunity there, these days go online, and even come to a, a, a talk like this one to practice the communication. And the pilot, the pilot is, um, is about creating a real life model. So to use the example of airplanes, they, they do wind tunnel testing. So in any pilot, you want to figure out what the key opportunities and the key critical uh, key risks. And in a pilot, you want to test the key components, which is the key opportunities, key risks, and key vulnerabilities. I can talk more, but today I want to share with you the concept that when you have a binder, you have a, you have both a bank to keep the ideas, and you have a lab to work the ideas. And uh, many people have done this in systems management. In fact, I learned this in my 20s from a very smart woman called Mary Tomlinson. So um, use the binder, put in what you want, add your own tabs if you want, start with these five tabs and your life will change. Thanks, Jay. <clears throat> yeah, that's excellent. Yeah, I, I like this. Uh this idea of writing things down. And I think you've given us some <coughs> methodology. I, I would say one thing you may want to do is uh, something uh, you can expand on this, because I think we would like to know more about it, right? That's the whole point of the three minute uh, speech segment, unless it's pretty specific, is to take this as a, as a kind of as an informative speech and uh, give a personal example on, on what you're doing when it comes to each of those, you know, when you say create a binder. And in your binder, what exactly do you have when it comes to ideas, things you're testing, pilot, product, and even maintenance? So there, there are some something specific that you're doing and that people can relate to. Something that you may want to think about. Uh, uh, you're muted. Uh. Would you give me something constructive, like something I can improve from the speech? Uh, th this I'm putting you on the spot. For, for this one? <laughs> for this one? Just my my speeching. Uh, oh, no, I, I, no, I think you, you communicated a good idea. I, what I'm saying is that, of course, you tried to do this in three minutes. What I'm saying is that this you could take this and take it to the expand upon it as a as an informative speech to help uh, people on what you just talked about, uh, like writing things down. And here's what you're particularly doing when it comes to creating a binder. You know, these five different uh, tabs, ideas, things that you're testing currently, the pilot things that you're rolling out, uh, the things that, that's rolled out the product, and then the maintenance of existing products that are already out there. Uh, what you're, is 
you know, quote unquote product, things that you already have out there. Uh, and I was just thinking that it's a good concept. I, ha I have the book. I haven't really read it in recently. I need to check it where that he's talking about that. I like that idea. I like the whole idea of ri writing things down. But then what you d did here was you gave a specific methodology that uh, that you need some like five five tabs and create a binder so that you can focus on it. What you're doing? What are the ideas? Because idea section is the biggest, right? That that could uh, every day you could come up with easily five to ten ideas. Then you have to right. narrow it down. Uh, so there's a whole process there. So I'm just saying that if you can, if you can. Yeah, no, I, no, I appreciate that. What I'm saying is, I want you to tell me something I'm not doing well that I can improve. Oh, in the uh, speech, in the speech. Yes. Oh no, no, I didn't, I didn't see anything that was that that you need to improve. I thought it was very conversational. You got your point across. Uh, that's what I'm saying. When it comes to these type of speeches, uh, you, you're very good because you're you're very good at free speaking. <laughs> Not so good at. Okay, we'll look at the next one then. Thank you. No, I'm just. That's just my uh, observation. That when it comes to free speaking, I think you tend to connect much better because you you have somebody to talk to. Mm -hmm. But when you have a camera alone and there's nobody there to give you any kind of feedback, then I I think you just get a little little uh, tentative, yeah. tentative on what you're saying. Your flow is not there. I mean, I, I, not that it's it's workable, but I just I find it kind of puzzling why there's a difference between when you have somebody at the other end and when you don't have somebody at the other end. Why there is that difference that I see, and only perhaps I can see it because I see you in both mode. Right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I appreciate okay. So that. I think this was good. I I, I like it. Uh, I like this. This was a good topic. I have to look into it more. Okay, so we'll just take a pause and move to our next segment. Okay, welcome to Speech Talk Live, episode number 35. My name is Jay Oza, and uh, we're moving to segment number one. And in this segment, I'm calling this uh, an effective uh, technique that you can use to to craft a speech. Now, I have uh, in the past in one of these shows I talked about this method called the lean speech method. Uh, some of it maybe you might think of it if you watched it that there are some similarities, but I think this is a little different. Uh, lean speech method is very structured method, right? that you start with a word, you move to a tagline, you uh, go to a log line. And I think it's very effective, and it's uh, I, I like the method. I use it all the time. This particular technique that I've come up with is more of uh, like, like if you need to put together a quick speech, you could use the lean speech method. That's the technique you can use to write it. But this is actually not even using the lean speech. Lean speech is if you really are going to give a formal speech. This is something you need to kind of, if I may use the word loosely, hack a speech. <laughs> you know, like to hack some code. So if you need to hack a speech, and you don't have a lot of time, right? Some, like Julie needs to go and suddenly give a talk on some topic that she's not that familiar with. When you use the lean speech method, it's a very formalized method. This is kind of like the informal method. So maybe there might be a better name here. Maybe Julie can come up with a better name. So. I look at the lean speech as a formal methodology. This is more like an informal methodology. And I don't have a name for it. So so what I this came up uh, as I was working uh, with one of the students taking this class. Uh, her name is Fabiana, and she's from Brazil. And I was trying to help her because she's currently in the middle of the course, and she's working on her speech. So I wanted to figure out like what's the best way to help her, because otherwise it gets overwhelming. It gets frustrating because it's hard. We don't realize it. You know, a lot of people out there just don't realize how hard public speaking is. And people who are doing it for the first time, it can be very frustrating. So part of my job as a mentor is to not only answer questions, but also come up with ways to simplify it because I've taken this course a number of times. And that's the level of expertise, that uh, mastery that I can bring uh, to this course and to the students who are taking it. So what I told her was that, here's what I do. And a lot of times when you do these things, but you never think about documenting it. And I think what Julie said earlier in the three minute segments, write things down. <laughs> so here was my example of writing it down. That's what I did here. 
So it's pretty uh, appropriate that this is kind of following what she just uh, talked about. So what I said was, so let's say, you, Julie or somebody, you have an idea on what you want to say. So the first thing is, come up with the subject. So that's the first thing you're going to do. The second thing is, once you have the subject, so maybe we can pick uh, something like, uh, I don't know, uh, pick a topic on, uh, we'll just uh, go with Julie's uh, stretching, let's say. Then you want to kind of do some free thinking. Uh, brainstorming, free thinking. So you got the subject. In this case, we said stretching, right? Free thinking, you just write down questions or write down some of the things that you want to talk about, like what are the benefits of free, uh, stretching? Why should people do st uh, stretching? How do I make them do stretching? All these type of things that come up in your mind, do that for whatever time where your brain can remain active. Once your brain starts uh, slacking off, then at that point, you may want to stop. Now, I don't know what how long that would take it, Depends. In the beginning, it may be difficult, but if you can fill up a page, it means you got a lot of ideas now. So do a free thinking for 10, 15 minutes, or even up to a half an hour, and just write down these random thoughts related to this one specific subject. And let's say after you've done that, you have it on your paper, then take take that information and create an outline, whether it's going to be whether it's for an impromptu speech or an informative speech or a persuasive speech. Let's say it's just a a two-point impromptu. So you may say, okay, stretching is beneficial for relieving stress. Let's say if that was your thesis. So then you can have uh, two points on that and and two uh, uh, evidence for each one of those points, two evidence for each one of those points. If you want to do a formal two-point uh, impromptu, or you can just do a one-point impromptu, depending on the situation uh, that you're in. If you want to do a quick three-minute talk, maybe you'll only have time for just one point. Okay. So once you have the outline down, and again, this is part of, it's not going to be perfect. It can You can make it better later on. But right now, you have the two points based on all the free thinking you, you have done. You review that, OK? You review that. And then you get to that next stage that I call free speaking. Now, I like this free speaking is because, like what I just saw Julie do there was, what I think of it as free speaking, because what that means there's no real script there now. You just have an idea. You've gotten some idea based on you've generated ideas, and now you've created an outline. So you have a, a flow that here's your thesis, here are the two points, and you will write it down, even if you have to look at it, put it on an index card, but don't script it. That's not the purpose of free speaking. Free speaking is whatever comes to your mind, and just talk about it. And the whole point here is you start it and you finish it. You can't stop it in the middle and saying, if you stop it, just stop it and then continue. So it's this is going to be the ugly version that you're going to create. But you need the ugly version so you can create a pretty version later on. So this, you got to get the ugly version out quickly. So now you know what you look like. And I think, believe it or not, <laughs> for some people, and I think for many people, the free speaking version will be a lot better because they'll be much relaxed. They won't have to worry about like, oh my God, uh, am I saying this correctly or not? Because you're free speaking. Nobody's going to be watching this. So this is the one you just want to go all out because nobody's ever going to see this. Only you're going to see it. Okay. So once you have the free speaking recorded, whether it's audio or video, I recommend video. Then you can take that. Now you have something. In the video that I did uh, for this uh, show, I, I said that you cannot edit a blank page. Similarly, you cannot edit a blank video. You cannot make the blank video better because there's nothing there. You can make the video that you recorded better when you are ready to, you know, make some corrections and some changes based on what you what you've seen, and then you record it. And what I said was. You don't want to do more than three takes. I think three takes is more than enough. Because if you've done free speaking, the ugly version, afterwards, it should get better after that. And at some point, you can't. You just say, OK, this is good enough. Let's say you get to the third one. So you have now three to select. Select the one you like, and that's it. That's the one you go with. Post it. Let people criticize it if they want to. You're done at that point. OK? At that point, you're done with that speech, and you move on. Now. The whole process, depending on what you're doing, 
I have brought, I've been doing this for quite some time. So when I pick a topic, I just go to the whiteboard that I have uh, left of me here and I'll just write down a quick thesis, an outline, and then I'll just work right off that. Uh, so I'll do a free speaking and then pretty much I can do it on the first take. And sometimes I know I made mistakes, but if the main message is clear, then I'm not going to go and re-record it just to correct some little mistakes or grammatical errors and things like that. I'll let it go the way it is. And most of the time, people are not going to even notice it. And if they notice it, if the main message is there, look, if, if there are grammar police out there, yeah, they'll notice it. But most of the people are not. I'm not trying to please the grammar police out there. I'm trying to get my main message across. So that's the method that I use. And I just uh, documented this and said, wait a second, this is something other people can also benefit from what I've been doing. So that's the method. I don't know what to call it. And uh, maybe Julie has a name. So Julie, what do you think? This is what I do. I mean, you must be doing something similar to this too, but what do you think of this? Well, Jay, first of all, I, I love to hack a speech uh, heading. So, you know, Facebook was, uh, Facebook's whole thing was all on hackathon. So I, I think you got something really cool there. As opposed to, um, or you could call it agile speech versus the structure, the lean speech method versus the, um, the agile method of speaking. Um, I really liked it. Actually, believe it or not, the speech I presented to you um, in this second segment was based on this technique. So having listened to you, I, I actually reorganized it into um, this is my version of Jay's uh, hacker speech methodology. Pre-game, generate the ideas and organize the ideas. Game, roll out and do it three times. Post-game, analyze, prioritize, and pick one or two, adopt. And I like to say that in the pre-game thing, when I use generate ideas, I, I, I like to use circles on a page because then I don't get end up with too many words and sometimes if I want to be more sophisticated I'll use the mind map technique where I link uh, you know circles with uh, lines to create more of a structure um, so that's my main tool for generate and then I go back and I circle in a different color like a red the ones I like so if I'm just working on one idea I'll pick a main idea and I'll pick um, the other ones. In terms of organizing, uh, I use the uh, techniques from the impromptu. Is every idea I have, I have a fact. And every fact is linked to the idea. So uh, that helps me to make sure I'm not speaking off base. It grounds my speech. And also, um, I use a sandwich technique, which people talk about in writing as well. And you do that automatically, which is the introduction. Tell them who I'm going to talk about. Uh, you know, whoever motivates me to talk about it, or why I think that what should mot the reason that will motivate them to listen to my speech. Talk about who I'm going to talk about, and which you did really well. And then also, I think you did really well in the in the speech itself, in the video itself, you recapped it. You did a recap, which I think is really important. So you told them what you're going to talk about, you told them the detail, and then you told them what you told them to talk. You told them what you talked about. I think that's something in a hacker speech probably would be a useful structure in the organization aspect. In the rollout, I was, um, I was concentrating on volume. And, and eye contact, and you'll see that I don't have much eye contact, but that was actually what I was working on, which to me means enthusiasm. And finally, in the postmortem, as you and I have been doing, is we analyze, we come up with all the ideas, but we know it's too many to adopt. So like, pick one or pick two and adopt. So that's why I would say that's the post game. I really like the idea of pre-game, game, and post game. And I like the idea of that in every one of those things, there's like one or two, there's two activities for every game. So it makes it easy for me to, you know, use my fingers and go through it. So thank you. I, I, I think I will use this technique 
uh, in comparison to the lean speech method, that's almost like coming up with a marketing message, an identity message, you know, like it's about who I am or the book I'm writing. So it goes deeper into the core of what message you want to relay. And so I think they work in conjunction very well. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, <clears throat> the, the lean speech is essentially a scripted, right? Because you're actually uh, are writing a script there. Like uh, one of the things we did uh, when we were uh, working with uh, Marius, we were actually scripting each aspect of the lean, the, the method, like the word. You had to come up with the word, then you had to come up with the tagline, then you had to come up with, because this is one where you're giving so much thought that when you convey, when you talk to people, you have already gone through it many times. This particular is basically for, I think could be applied for anything, but primarily like say for 330, uh, the, the, the 330 challenge, right? Where you have to come up with these speeches and you're like, oh my God, as soon as the word speech enters, you think like, oh my God, I don't have like 24 hours or like 40 hours working on it. And I'm saying, no, it doesn't have to take 40 hours. All you need to do is just come up with the subject, come up with a few ideas, organize it, then free speak it. And then after that, see what you need to change, then record it again, but do not record more than three times. If you think that the, after the first one, you're happy, then stop, you're done. So this, I, I would not recommend this method for people who are trying to convey some message that they want people to take away. Uh, because that's what the lean speech is. Lean speech, I think, is more formalized. So, like, if you if you're going to tell people what you do, like as your uh, practice, like stretching, then you want to use a lean speech method. But if you want to take some aspect of it and give a speech where you just don't have time, then I think this method would be. I, I primarily I would use I use this method for the the videos that I record. The the videos that you see that I I constantly record. I usually start with that. Uh, the subject, and then I will come up with a quick outline based on some thoughts that I have. Sometimes I don't have to write a lot. If I already have certain uh, ideas, then I'll just go with that. And and sometimes that's what I'm saying. This is not designed to be perfect or even close to. These are just good enough speeches. I think lean speech, the standard is a little higher there. That's That's how I look at it. Yeah, I think I'm saying the same thing. Maybe um, I is like this is almost like where you're prototyping, you know, like if you look at um, uh, what I have, the stages of life cycle uh, for present, the four stages, this is at the idea stage or from the idea stage you're testing out an idea. Yeah, but, I like the word prototype. That's what. That's the right word. These are yeah. prototypes. The prototypes. Whereas, the lean speech method, you pretty much know what you want. You really want to roll out a message yeah. to the masses. So that's almost like uh, the actual project, the implementation. So you want to have more thoughts into it, you know. And, and that's through, like that go through a lot of iteration. Here, you're done after three takes, pretty right. much. Yeah. But then you you want to make sure that your met. That's why I say it's an identity thing. It's like if I want to make sure what I'm talking about the speech is I want to present an identity for my book, right? So then I will use the lean speech method to get into the heart of what message I want. Yeah, I I think you're right. That if you you could take what you have here and then you could use that as a kind of the entry point into the lean speech. I agree. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so I think, uh, so that's, so those are the two differences between lean speech and this hacker speech. This is basically to give a speech quickly. This is a way it's quick, but it's still, uh, there's some structure here, but it's not, it, it's simple. It's not like we're loading them with like, Oh my God, you got to go away. This is to, uh, you have to practice this because once, because I've been doing it for a while, so it's almost become like uh, automatic for me now. This is how I do it. But if I have to do a lean speech, I couldn't do it this fast. Right. Yeah. It's almost like you're improvising or uh, impromptu speech, like a speedy impromptu speech. Right. So if you are in a business meeting and your boss asks you what's going on with your project, so instead of just a blah blah blah. blah you can use this method to quickly organize your major ideas so that it's still cogent and 
uh, valid. Right, right, right. Okay, any other thoughts on this? or? But I think one thing I, I'll recommend is that you can take what I have, and if you want to expand it, then just make another video. So that way you can say, I'm going to take this, and here's what I'm doing with this. And that's some of the things that you said, you put the circles or mind map and all that, that could be your technique, that here's how I, I hack a speech. So uh, yeah, you can come up with uh, the Julie's version of hack a speech. OK, so we'll stop here. And uh, we're going to move on to we'll take a brief pause. We're going to move on to the next segment. OK, welcome to Speech Talk Live, episode number 35. My name is Jay Ozep. And we're moving to segment two. And in this segment, I'm going to uh, give it to Julie, as she's going to facilitate this uh, session. And this is based on a video that she has recorded uh, that has to do with the book that she's writing. And she's talking about the benefits uh, and uh, of this uh, stretches. Her book is about stretching and some of the benefits of uh, doing these stretches. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Julie to take it over. Thanks, Jay. And thank you for all your support on the both the book and the giving me opportunity to speak about it a little bit more. And I'm looking forward to hear your feedback and your questions. So th there's basically 10 or 11 stretches. And I actually call, like to call them practice in the sense that, or even training, in the sense that these are not just exercises to do for your muscles. These, these stretches are very simple. They, um, they are. The basic yoga moves like forward bend, the straddle, and so on. But they're designed in a way to feed into each other so that our bodies work in conjunction to open up. One of the things is in our lives, we tend to spend time in three areas you know, survival, um, trying to master like become wealthy or have great relationships, and then finally to become have a great relationship with ourselves, who we really are. And these stretches actually releases the energy in our body. So when you're in pain, it goes to a place of pain, releases the energy that's stuck, and then so you have more energy to recover and heal. And as you become healthy, these same stretches will continue the work and bring your energy so you can be successful in mastery. So uh, in my own case, I, I, was, I had the mental problem of uh, depression from post-trauma. My life has been traumatic. And at the low point of my life, I, I could not do much. Watching TV was a high point of the days that I could watch TV was a, was a good day. And but I had learned these stretches, uh, the forward bend and the straddle and the Uddiyana Banda, downward dog. They helped me. I, I actually was able to recover to a different state because of these stretches when I could not even meditate. But and also a friend of mine who has had severe uh, sciatica issues, she could barely walk. And she had back problems, so when she went to the movie, she needed to bring up a, a back support to watch it, and she had internal dryness. By doing these stretches with me for a year, she suddenly realized she never brought her back support anymore, and her internal problems were solved. And these these stretches are actually taught to me by Ever Ogawa. And I can say that when he leads a workshop, I have seen grown men cry and grown women too. But after that, there's a release of where it's stuck and they go on. And one woman wanted to be the principal of um, her school and she was angry. And because she did that, she was able to go ahead and find herself. And there's a man in Chicago who teaches these stretches because they have so transform, transformed his life. Um, so Jay, I will turn over to you and give me, uh, give me uh, feedback or questions on both 
my my presentation, which was rather. By the way, I did use a lean. Uh, I did use a hacker speech method, but it's really a combination of the lean speech method because you did spend a couple hours of coaching me. But I so it was a combination of both methods. So thank you, Jay. Okay, good. Yeah, that was good. So so there. So basically, what you did here was you recorded a. I think it was a ten minute video on. On that, and then you just gave a brief uh, summary of uh, introduced the the, the the topic of what you talked about in the video. And here's what I would say: that uh, so let me just comment on the the speech you gave live. The speech you gave live is much different; sounds much different than the speech you record. And I think again, it is because when you have somebody observing you, you tend to be much focused on what you want to communicate uh, rather than let your mind wander into things that the other person may not be getting it. So I think that what you just did live was excellent, okay? Now, I'm not saying that the one that you did recording wasn't excellent either. That, that had a lot of good things there too, so I'll, I'll point that out. Uh, the thing that uh, the the thing that was important uh, in the speech is that there are three three things. I think what you did really well is that you explained your story. So you had two stories, and you didn't go into like you just briefly mentioned Everett Ogawa and all that, which was fine. You didn't. I don't need to know the details of Everett Ogawa. Like I said, I don't know who he is, but I know who you are, and the focus was on how this is making difference. Like the, the part that was impactful is like after people have gone through the session, you know, they're crying and it, they're feeling so much better. So that came out really well. So it gets people excited. Like, wow, I want to know more about this. You know, I want to know more about this. What exactly is this? How is this working? And in, in this one, you're trying to get people excited about the stretching, the, the exercise you're doing and you yourself, are the example of that. So that's the one that has to stand out. So I said, look, I can give you a lot of examples, uh, but I'd rather just talk about myself because it, it how this has helped me, right? And the, 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 the thing that I think you were doing it, that was well, but I think you can do even more to get people really into your story, right? Get them to feel your story. I think you, you, you're going, you, you're close, but I think you can still do a little bit more on, on how you approach it. Uh, so once you describe the stretching, saying, okay, so let me just first give you, one of the things I'd like you to do more, Julie, is to have the conversation with people when you're speaking. Because sometimes some of these topics, even though you may know it really well, but I don't, right? You have to assume, you have to talk to me like I'm in third or fourth grade. So you say, so So let me just first start, even though it may sound like you're being, you're repeating yourself, but that's okay. So you could say, okay, so I'm gonna talk about the benefits of stretching. And you can even take a pause. So there's that emphasis there. Wow, she just paused, right? And then say, well, before I do that, let me just tell you the three things, physical, then there is a success in life, and then there's spiritual aspect, okay? So now you're given the overview of stretching. What are the main benefits of it? And then say, okay, now that you understand, and you can even summarize at the end. Now that, so let me just summarize the three benefits again, because some people may not have gotten it, right? The three levels you're talking about. Now what I want to get to talk about is how this has helped me and see if you can walk them through the three levels with your own personal example. And you're saying, look, I had some difficulties and then I've used it continuously for the second level. And now I'm at the third level. So, and then said, but this is not just me. There are other cases I can give. And let me talk about this one woman who had a specific case when it came to her back uh, sciatica. And now she's feeling so much better. So it's not that you don't have the material. It's just that the material you have, there's a lot that you can do with it. And the question that, the thing that, uh, that I would like you to focus on is, how to become much more, bring people into the story so they really relate to you and how this particular stretching has made a difference in your life. So it's not that you don't have the story, it's just that you, you've got to get, put some more, uh, more emotion into that. I don't okay. know if that makes sense. 
Yes. And also have that conversation. I, I think sometimes when you're speaking, you're assuming too much of your audience. And I think you should not. That your audience needs to be carefully uh, guided. Like how are you going to guide them on what you want them to feel, what they want them to know, and what you want them to do. So use the feel, know, do approach, right? You want them to feel something. And I think the feeling part you were getting there, but you could do more there. I, I, I think the part that you do really well is getting them to know it. But then the other part is the part that I think you need to probably work on more is getting them to actually do it. So the feel, yes. there's, a feel there's a feel part of this talk, okay? You've got to make them feel. Yes. Like the back yes. pain, this thing. The words you use have to be very calibrated closely. Like what are the, the pain words, right? The, the sciatica, ooh, excru you got to make the faces like, oh, excruciating pain. Like, you know, you got to grimace because just say that she had a pain, it doesn't tell me anything. Oh, you know how that feels like. Like have that conversation. You know what a back pain is like, right? You can't walk. You're, you feel like somebody's like poking you with needles. Like got to make people feel it, right? So the feel part is something that that needs a little work. And then the no part. I think the no part, you, you do it well, you may just have to repeat that so that people understand it. So here's the level one. And if you have a specific example, and, and sometimes the transition from one to the other, just pause a little. Just because once you go from one to the other, it's hard to sometimes tell when the first one ends and when the second one is starting. And then once you do the, the no part, then that part after you've done it is like, but so here's what I'd like you to do. Something simple, just so you know the benefits immediately. So you, you, take, you take care of all three of them. The feeling part, the knowledge part, the no part, and the do part. Okay, that's great. You need to make a speech on that. I think I have written something on it. Yeah, I can, I can do that. Yeah, I think you with, your speech, with your speech, you can do it because this is about pain. So that is the right. feel part, the emotion part, because you use yourself out of the example. Mm -hmm. And you, you've got to make me feel like what that feels like. See, I'm not getting that. And I know it's difficult, okay. so don't take this as like, wow, I got I to be. No, 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 I want more feedback. I, I, just, I, just, I just want you to make me feel like what you are feeling before that. And then how are you feeling afterwards, after you did the stretches? And so, can I comment on your video? Yes, please. Okay, so the, the video, again, a lot of these comments are kind of similar, right? And in, in the video, it, the, 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 I think the part that you focus mostly on is the knowledge part, the no part. And the part that I think needs to come out clearly is the feel part, that the stretching has a specific purpose when it comes to pain, when it comes to some sort of difficulties. And those difficulties has to be felt. You have to make people feel what that's like. So you can say, so let's start with the physical. Now, this is the one we all deal with, the stress, the back pain, the neck pain, all kinds, or from all sorts of you know depression, et cetera. Let's just focus on my situation. And in that case, you can talk about your particular situation, right? And then you can move to the next part is the, the, the level two. And that's the stress comes in, right? We all want to succeed, but we're not taking the break. Like, you know, we all want to like go for the next promotion. We're doing all these things. We're constantly on the go. We're like that in that rat in that wheel. But are we ever taking a break because your body and I think there's a point here is that your body is somehow connected to your brain. <laughs> so if your body is not feeling well, then your brain isn't going to feel well, right? The body and brain are kind of working together. That has to come out clearly. So you have to yes. kind of to demonstrate that, that the body is not a separate body. It's connected to the brain. The brain and body kind of work together. And then the spiritual part that now once you've gotten that under control and you feel like you're, you're, you're under control at work and in your life, then you move to the next phase, the spiritual aspect of it. And there you can just say, then you just want to relax. So now you have gotten mastery over not what happens physically, what happens at work, but you can deal with life and you can even help others out. 
and and that's where you're at that once you're at that spiritual stage you not only have taken care of yourself but now you're in a position to help others because mm. of your mastery level okay because that's the stage you're in you're at that mastery level where you're helping other people out so but you have to make that come out in the speech that why is that so important every time i ask this question like why do i need to know this like i call it the joy behar test like you know she always does on that sad night live skit like so what who cares like that right so every time you say physical like okay so what like like why should i care about that so you have to answer that question then with stress so what's it so for who cares and what else yeah so that's the question right so each one if if you're going to talk about the three levels then the, you have to ask yourself like the audience is asking if i'm an audience i'm asking okay so what like okay so who cares like why should i care about that right right so like if you're going to talk about level 1 the survival my initial question is okay i think julie better answer this question next so what who cares if she's not answering that question then i'm kind of losing interest completely okay so okay. so 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 that means okay so what does that mean when you're speaking you really have to speak to that you may even say so you're probably asking so what who cares right and that's okay that's okay that makes you much more conversational mhm so what 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 I, what i'm trying to get to is that that uh, get into that conversational mode and be under control like you have this whole thing under control because if you're giving a speech like this the first thing i always look for is is the speaker really under control on what he or she is saying because right. i i go not by the content i go by how you are presenting the content that tells me how i should interpret the content the content you're taking that content and interpreting it and if your interpreting looks like you're rushing through it you're not very clear then it doesn't do justice to the content at all so uh, you you, you want to make sure that the way you present the content is very important because otherwise i'm not going to retain that much but i am going to retain how you are looking and how you're feeling about the content right so the main thing is take a deep breath and just like enjoy it like i say enjoy it and i mean your 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 speech was fine there was nothing wrong with that speech i think it just could be made better oh definitely yeah, yeah. actually i did that twice um so that was the second take the first take was actually better but it was just an audio but it was in front of uh, my my study buddy Okay. Uh, you know, when I did it in front of my study buddy, he said it was great. He gave me no negative feedback. But as you say, I have to somehow overcome this thing of speaking in front of a video with no audience. So that's I, my problem. I just think I just I think we we discussed this uh, one time in the past where many uh, times, yeah. I think just just each point just ask a question like so so like let's say you're doing the speech you can say so you're probably wondering like how is this like just get the questions out right so because these are the kind of questions the audience are probably asking so you're wondering like why should i listen to yet another uh, exercise to feel better right you heard so many of them out there so you kind of already doing some objection handling up front right like there are so many things out there yoga this and that and that right but stretching can be done by anybody anyone and you don't need to know a lot you don't need to go to a yoga studio so right away you know that's something you can make it clear that stretching is something that most of us don't do most of us just are constantly on the run and stretching is not part of something we do even when you get up out of the bed we nobody stretches so there's something right there so one of the things you can just use always give them some takeaway tell them if you don't do anything here's a simple exercise you can do when you get out of the bed if you can do this much you'll already feel better in the morning so like you know maybe come some kind of a stretch where you just like before you get up because a lot of people just get out of the bed as soon as the alarm goes off right and that's not it's not the right way to get up get up right so before you get up just take a couple of minutes and just do some simple stretches before you get out of the bed even if you don't do any of these other stretches just do this much right so what you're doing there is just giving them one quick takeaway that they can all do and said look if you're not going to take anything i'm saying just at least do this one simple exercise that's not going to take more than 30 seconds and uh, <laughs> i think you're muted yeah 
Yeah, I wanted to mute myself. Great, thanks. Okay, so do you have any cl closing thoughts? Well, um, yeah, so as Jay says, one of the things I like you to do uh, is actually not a stretching exercise, but um, what I call centering. I have a video here, and you can do it any time when you're, when you're waiting for coffee or when you're waiting for coffee or you're sitting in a meeting. Just straighten up your back, bring your shoulders up. Imagine someone's pulling your head. Uh, the center of your head, your chin will naturally tuck and you'll feel yourself much more relaxed. Imagine there's two golf balls in your armpits and your arms will relax and then take some nice deep belly breaths. And this will help you to be uh, more relaxed but also more focused so you get higher energy and relax at the same time. And that's the purpose of these stretches, is not just for you to be relaxed, but also to become more energetic. So you can do that anytime you want. Thank you. How's that? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I, I think I, I, I think you have everything in this speech. I'm just like I think at this point you need to be beyond intermediate. You've got to move into the expert stage, right? So so I'm a little hard on you, but uh, that's because I think uh, I think. You, that's the thing. If you were just like the beginner, I could easily say that. Oh yeah, that's good. That you you got through a speech. At this point, getting through a speech is not your issue. At this point, right? <laughs> no, I, I I want more. Uh, I want more critical feedback. Yeah. At this I point, so the main that. thing I'm looking for is that you you already know the subject well, and I just want you to simplify it and just have a conversation so that I feel like I'm really smart now because of how you. Uh, communicated the subject to me. Great, thank okay. you. All right, Appreciate Julie, thanks that. a lot for facilitating this session and uh, I really enjoyed watching your video. So, uh, like I said, you can just continue working on that and we'll uh, uh, we'll do a, a segment uh, next week if you have another video, okay? Yes, great, thank you. Okay, at this point uh, we're going to take a brief pause and move to our third segment. So I want to thank Julie for facilitating this uh, second segment and this is an example of what we do. Uh, I don't have to do all the segments. If you have a segment that you want to facilitate, hey, drop me an email or let me know and uh, come up with a topic and then you can facilitate the session and we'll give you feedback. So it's simple as that, okay? But uh, I can't do it for you. You got to do it. Okay, welcome back. As this is Speech Talk Live, episode number 35, and we're moving to segment number three. So in this segment, I recorded a short a video as a way to kind of uh, discuss this topic. And it's a topic that I think it's, I think it's kind of important, uh, especially when it comes to anything, but especially public speaking, because with public speaking, no matter what your message at the end of the day is you have you are the message right at the end how you look how you feel and how you appear is the message and one of the things that i think you always see people do when they're giving a speech is they say oh i am so happy to be here i'm so glad to be here etc and i am like but but why not just show it I mean, if you're glad to be there, do you have to actually have to say it? Is it a, is it a nervous habit that I'm so happy, or is it something you're not even thought about? When when I hear somebody say, "I'm so happy to be here," like I am so happy to be here. Well, okay, okay, I got it. <laughs> now show it to me, right? And if you're happy, means that you are happy because you are happy to really work on the speech, and now you're getting the opportunity to give the speech, and then. Hopefully, after giving the speech, you're going to be also happy to see what you could have done better. Do a quick evaluation, and and that's what a, my my point in this video that I recorded is that that giving a speech is an end-to-end -end process. And one of the things we discussed in an earlier segment is we kind of called it now hack a speech. So let's say you did hack a speech. But you gotta enjoy that. <laughs> that has to be an enjoyable experience. Like it can't be a chore. Like, oh man, I gotta hack another speech. I can't deal with this. No, that means then your speech is gonna suck too. Okay, because if you don't like hacking a speech, that means when you're giving a speech, it's going to really 
you're going to give a sucker speech, okay? So uh, you got to hack a speech, and then you got to really ace that speech. You can't just uh, – if hacking is just painful to you, then, then it's not going to go well. So my point is very simple here. Start enjoying doing this because if, you, if you're not enjoying giving a speech – like we enjoy doing the show, as you can tell, right? Julie and I really enjoy doing the show. We don't have really notes prepared. We just come with a brief outline, with brief segments. We do some prep work, and then we just let it flow. And sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. But the fact is, I really enjoy being on this show for about hour, hour and a half. It's just really enjoyable because it makes me think. It gives me an opportunity to share. Uh, my thoughts with Julie, I like to get her feedback and I can learn from what her perspective is, her thoughts is, and I like to help her, she helps me. And that has to be fun. <laughs> Otherwise, for other people, it's evidently not fun. That's why we don't see them on the show. So this is kind of goes to show that in the beginning, it probably for me and Julie, it wasn't fun, but we kept at it. And now I kind of look forward to Friday at 10 o'clock to do this show. Similarly, when you're giving a speech, you really have to be looking forward to being on that stage, talking to that audience because you have something important to say and you're there to serve them in some capacity. And if you, if you take that attitude, then you will come across like somebody who belongs there. A lot of times I see speakers, I don't ever get the feeling they really belong there. They're kind of going through the motion. And the one thing you don't want to do is go through the motion when it comes to giving a speech. You've got to put it all out there. Whether it, they don't, people don't like it, that's their opinion. They're entitled to it. But as a speaker, you got to put it all out there. I put it all out there when I do this show. Julie puts it all out there. I'm exhausted after the show. I take a break. After the show is done, like around 1130, I have to take a break because mentally it's very really draining because we put so much into this when we're doing the show because we don't hold back or anything and you got to enjoy it so the point again is enjoy this because otherwise it, the audience is going to notice it and that's the thing you don't want that to happen uh julie what are, what are your thoughts on this yeah jay thanks absolutely i think um having fun or enjoying it's like a lubricant it makes everything a little easier and I speak to in terms of like why people don't come on the show I think there's a major factor of fear you know fear of speaking to uh, failure fear of looking weird as, of, as we always say public speaking is one of the major fears in our human psyche but uh, as you said because you and I are friends now, we support each other, we in there, and we know that it's safe space, as you say earlier, it's a place where we can make mistakes and we can explore the edges of where we can be. Um, it's, it's great to, um, to have fun, to enjoy, and I also like the fact that you used the word to be of service, and this is the first time I heard it in your speech, so it's very refreshing. I would also like to speak on to your video that you said uh, you cannot fool the audience. You have to be actually enjoying it. And I think uh, Malcolm Gladwell in his book Blink says people make judgments of everybody in the first 30 seconds or less. Okay, Actually, it's 1 50th of a thousand of seconds that people make a judgment, it's like that. And these are the neuro tests. Um, enjoying being of service is a great point. And you mentioned that Trump uh, was a great example of how he loves to speak and people pick up on that. And while you know, I'm not a fan of Trump, so I have to agree with you on that, that he really enjoys his speeches. Um, and I, one more thing is uh, you mentioned that it's great to, after the presentation, to do a post-mortem, which is something you say in your hackathon, hacker speech, too, hackathon, speech hackathon. Um, yeah, I think that I appreciate your analysis because otherwise 
it's very hard for me to improve because all I hear is the sound of my own voice playing and playing over again. So this is a great place for people to come and practice and part of it is to have fun, to enjoy it, which is what you always say. Yeah, so uh, yeah, thanks thanks for that uh, that, that uh, input there. Uh, so so let me address the, the Trump part. Uh, now, I, I'm not a, I, I think with Trump, I think is uh, whether you like him or not is not the point here. The point is that you have to enjoy doing what he does because he speaks uh, almost like every day in front of tens of thousands, uh, ten, at least 10,000 people. And I've seen some of his speeches uh, from start to beginning, uh, from start to finish. And he really likes being there. He really does. An audience pick it up. And he's not scripted. And whether he makes sense or not, that's immaterial at this point, right? Because he is just there having fun. And when you're having fun, it becomes very contagious. He tends to draw people to come see him. And no matter what, even if your speech content is people are not going to like it, the one thing you don't want to do is, and this is part of uh, recording on a video, you, you have to, and again, this is not easy. It's not easy for some people. And some people get really stiff in front of a camera. And camera doesn't lie, right? It, it tells you whether you're really into your topic, whether you really are enjoying doing what you're doing. I always pick that up, whether it's uh, giving a speech or whether it's somebody doing a job. The first thing I always notice is, does this person enjoy what that per is that person is doing right now? So it's not even speech. So you know we're we're focusing here on the speech. But if you ever go to a restaurant, if you ever go anywhere, always see if you're having a conversation. If you're not having a conversation, does that person enjoy the job that person is doing? Like you know, I always when I take my son to Burger King or or or, or McDonald's. The thing I'm always noticing are these young people that are working there. Do they really enjoy their job? And I try to get into a conversation to see whether they really like their job. And part of their job really is to serve their customer, right? And if they're not looking like they want to have a conversation with me or that, I always feel like they may not really enjoy what they're doing or somebody hasn't trained them. So in anything, whether it's a teacher, whether it's a principal, whether it's a policeman or anybody, the main thing you have to look for is do they enjoy what they're doing? Because that's what you owe to your, your customers. And same thing you owe to your audience when you're, when you're speaking, that they're there, they're, you're taking up their time, at least whether the, they may not agree with you, but the least you can do is look like you're having you want to be there, and you're enjoying that experience of being there. So, it, it's it takes a while to to get this right, but you at least have to get it into your head that I'm going to go with this attitude because certain some people may not have the right body language, maybe their voice is not good, but I think people do pick up whether you're enjoying it. And this is another thing I have to point out about uh, Sarah Palin. A lot of people, I mean, she's not a great speaker. But one thing I will give her credit for is that she really enjoys giving speeches. Sometimes people don't know what she's saying, but that's immaterial. She enjoys being on the stage giving a speech, and the audience pick it up, and they're willing to give her a lot of latitude because of that. You know, she her grammar is not right, her intonation is all wrong, everything is wrong. But the fact that is right in her speech always is she really enjoys giving a speech. So use her as an example that if she can pull it off, and she I heard just recently she gets $110,000 per speech. So just having fun can be very lucrative. <laughs> so Julie, start having fun. You can start making $110,000. Hey, I'm happy with uh, $10,000 <laughs> or $11,000. <laughs> but thank you. That's a great uh, point. We we definitely have to have more fun. So you, I'll make you the master of fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I should put that in my checklist. I put that because I just uh, picked that up uh, recently, and I have a checklist, which I haven't shared with you. I should send that to you. I have a checklist to see if there's something missing in there. And one of the things I had to add was make sure you're enjoying the experience of giving a speech, because if you're not, that's the first thing the audience is going to pick up, that 
who's this stiff talking to us like that? <laughs> Here somebody has really introduced you. And now you're going to get a really a great talk from this guy named Jay Oza. And then you come on like, oh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, I am so happy to be here. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> you're happy to be here? It looks like somebody's <laughs> holding a gun on your head to make sure you deliver a good speech. All right. So I think uh, okay. any, any, cl any closing thoughts or we're pretty much done with this? Uh, great session today. Thank you so okay, much. Okay, so let me close this uh, program out, and then we'll uh, use the rest of the time for any uh, to close out any things we need to talk about. So let me thank Julie, and let me thank you for watching this live, or if you're watching this uh, on a recording. Uh, as I said, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please let me know. If you are interested in the future to facilitate a session. Uh, certainly let us let me know or let us know and you can first come on and introduce yourself like I said uh, you can do a three minute segment and the main thing we ask is that you're currently uh, taking the Coursera course uh, introduction to public speaking since we are affiliated with that course so as I like to close this show out I always say that you are have you speak so you get to control that and if you keep improving it then that's how people will see you and it's something we all control so keep practicing, keep learning, keep teaching, and keep coaching, and, and you'll keep on getting better. OK? We'll see you next week. All right. So what do we need to close out? You're, you're muted. OK, so first of all, I really like your um, energy level today. It seems like you went up a notch. Yeah, I was a little in the beginning because I, I because these lights here they kind of start bothering my eyes. So a lot of times my eyes are kind of droopy. But if I turn them off, then it, I, my background will be very dark. So sometimes that's that's the problem. So I put one on the left side and one on the right side. So when I look straight, I I don't actually stare right into the lights. Oh, okay. So uh, in terms of uh, what's going on, next week I'll do a, a segment on one of the stretches. I think I'm going to do it on the rack door or the forward bend. Um, and I already sent you uh, one video, but I'll improve it this week, okay, on forward bend. And um, I'm going to approach Michael, the musician, about coming on to uh, maybe first first to do a three minute and then if he wants to do a segment. That's what I have. Um, yeah, so let him, let him first come on just to introduce himself and tell him you can introduce yourself in a three minute segment and then after that if you want to come on and facilitate us, uh, do a, like us a QA, and a an interview session. Right. And you could do that. And that's something you can tape and then use it as a part of your marketing tool. Right. Now, he he won't stay. For, he might not stay for the 90 minutes. That's no, okay, no, no. Right? Tell him that we'll give you the first 30 minutes, and then he can drop off after that. OK. OK. I just want to make sure it's OK with you. Yeah, you know? yeah. If he, if he wants to, we'll give him an opportunity, because it's something, if he thinks it can help him, then he should take advantage of it. Yeah, and there's other people who, you know, once you, we get this going, there's other people I can approach, too. So that's great. Um, I appreciate all your comments. I don't know if I can integrate everything into yeah, you know, the next me, speech. If you want more, I'm I can, I, let, let me do this. What I'll do is I'll watch the video again, and I'll watch the, the live version, and then I'll give you more feedback. But why, I, why, I, why, why don't we do this? Why don't we do the next one? Uh, I, I'll do the next one. You can give me feedback on the next one. Yeah, I just want to like the. I want to just take a look at the live one on the video and see and compare the two to see. Oh, that would be great if you don't see mind. See what, uh, what, uh, what 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 happened there, and it's not like anything negative. I just think there's a there's a thing to improve, and that's what we all work on. And it's not like you need to improve a lot. I just think that you need to like just come across like you're having a conversation, and this is a common feedback I've been giving you. Right. And I just need to be more enthusiastic, more eye contact. You know, so I I have to stay focused for the whole time. Yeah, I I think uh, if uh, if you just start asking questions like like right now you and I are talking, mm -hmm. like I'm asking you a question, but if I'm not here, if I'm not here, that means that you have to ask that question yourself. 
I will try that. So you should say, so uh, So you're probably, and remember when you ask a question, you got to take a pause because otherwise the question is just like a part of your, you're jumbling on, you're stepping all over your question, right? Mm -hmm. So you say, so you probably are, and sometimes use different techniques, experiment it, because I think you do it well when you're doing it live, but when it's a, when it's a, a, a recording, I think this time it was much better than the past ones that I've seen. Okay. But I think there's still room for improvement here. So just say, so, you know, stretching. So you must be wondering, like, why yet another exercise that I have to do? And the thing to get across is that, like, what is the main thing you want to get across that they should latch on to? This will have a high impact with minimal amount of time investment or something. There has to be something catchy that that's where the lean speech method really works out. If there's nothing catchy in what you're saying to me, for this speech, if you really want to make it better, is to use the log line. Can you tell me in one sentence what your whole speech is about? Right. Because that log line is one thing that never fails, by the way. Right. In anything, whether it's politics, whether it's business, whether it's uh, anything, the log line is your key to salvation. Right. I, I really like I like I like both of your methods. I like your hack method. I call it the agile method, the hmm. agile speech method. Right. And then the this other one I call it the lean speech. Yeah, so it's not really just speech, it's lean lean identity or lean presentation. Yeah. So, there's yeah, something so. else like core identity. It's you a really messaging. It's a, it's a messaging, right? It's yeah. It's like a key message. It's a lean message speech. That's what it is. You got a lean message. You got to come up with a message in 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 a, in a way that is uh, short and quick. Okay. Yeah. Lean key message. So you know, it was like interesting. That. I actually that there was a person that called me. Uh, it's a friend. He called me. He's like kind of struggling right now, and. Uh, he, he, this guy is really highly educated. He's got a PhD. He's got two books written. But when people are struggling, they lose their confidence. Yeah. So yeah. I, I had to send him this book that I was working on a while back, which I, I never finished. And uh, he's kind of at a crossroad, like what he wants to do. So I've been, uh, he's a friend, so I can't really charge him anything. But you can still get him a re get a reference from him. Yeah, right, right. So I, I helped him, and uh, he just sent me an email saying, Jay, that, that because I spent like almost two hours with him yesterday, because he was like a little down, because he was yeah. getting really frustrated. So I spent two hours with him, and he was feeling much better afterwards. Uh, so I said, uh, uh, because he doesn't see again this comes down to what you and I were talking about a lot of these people do not know how to interview with people they're highly educated because I was talking to a friend from IBM yesterday and he's all excited I said I'm, I'm, he would like to get a copy of this book and what I s said to him is that uh, I said I've, I've been working with my partner Julie and one of the things she came up with is I said I'm she said, like, who's you, who are you going to target your course towards? I said, right now, probably, I think if you're going to, we got to narrow the scope. Otherwise, if you're all over the map, then it's appealing to nobody. So I said, we're going to target the IT community because one of the things she pointed out, which I hadn't really thought about, was that a lot of these people get a, a, a mention in their, in their reviews that they need to work on their soft skills. And what we have to offer is something that directly addresses that. So I said that that rather than trying to target other people, but our immediate focus will be, because IT is a huge community right there. If you can just target that one community and understand their needs, because you come from IT space, I come from IT space, we can speak their language. And right. I think rather than trying to help people out in other fields, MBAs and all that, if they want to, we can, but I said our initial focus will be primarily in the IT space. Because that's where the need is. Uh, you know, you know, another space that's really I don't know if there's market for it is actuaries, because um, they're really nerdy. But let's stay on IT. Okay, great. So I don't know anything about that space. So uh, unless we get one client let's, who let's, can let's do IT, and because uh, we have that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because IT and we have Latash. <laughs> no, no, I, I, we have we have actually a lot of people in IT. Uh, we don't need that many, but I'm just saying that. With, with IT, what happens is that there's an entire community, not only in U.S., but all over the world. Yeah. 
No, I get that. Right. So, yeah. uh, and uh, and Silicon Valley, we could become, we may have to move out to Silicon Valley. <laughs> I just realized that seventy-five percent of the people in tech are from are foreign-born in Silicon Valley. Yeah, the 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 whole world has changed, right? Because when I was uh, in IT, I I was the only little uh, minority there, right? Once in a while, there's a little African American. Once uh, once in a while, there's now Indian or Chinese or Eastern European, but now it's like all Eastern European or Indian or Chinese. But they're still like they're always looking for more women, so you still can get in. <laughs> I don't think so. You can say, hey, if you want to get a twofer, you get a an Asian. That's uh, what I was. I was a twofer. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, and, you're, and you're also partly Jewish too, I guess, right? <laughs> right, but they don't have numbers for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Finkelstein, so I'm a threefer. So that means that you got job security there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anything, okay. anything else? No. Uh, are we going to uh, talk in the middle of the week about uh, either one of our speech, uh, either your book or my book? Yeah. So, my so, so, so let me tell you what I'm working on. Based on your feedback, I'm now moved on to. I've taken some of the points that you made and I've incorporated it, right? So I'm actually now moving on a second draft of my book. Okay, so next week let's talk about your book then. This coming yeah, the second Wednesday. draft. It may not be done, but I can talk about it. I can give you. Maybe yeah. I can just send you an outline on what it looks like. Okay. Yeah, talking about it sometimes it helps too. So yeah, um, so I, I can talk about the book, and what I can do do is rather than give you the entire book. What I can tell give you is like an outline of what it looks like right now, and then we can just walk through the outline. Perfect. Okay. okay. Now Wednesday, have you Wednesday, or Wednesday or Thursday? Uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay, you got it. Okay. Yeah. All right, Julie. Enjoy your weekend, and I'll uh, just see me on the email. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, and I'll bye. watch this. Thanks. Bye. Okay, bye.